All right, so we're diving deep into the world of Anirudh Ravichander today. Someone wants us to go way past why this Kulaveri die. Yeah, definitely more to him than just that one song. For sure. They mm -hmm. want to see like the full scope of his musical journey, right? And we've got the goods. We do. This is going to be good. This isn't just about his music either. It's intertwined with like the whole history of Indian cinema. Okay, now you've got me hooked. So where does this journey even begin? Well, let's see. His wiki says Anirudh was born October 16th, 1990. Okay. But here's where it gets juicy. Ready? His uncle is, wait for it, Rajini Kanth. Hold up. Rajini Kanth. Like the Rajini Kanth. The one and only. Whoa. Talk about a legend in the family. Right. And it goes deeper. Anirudh's dad, an actor, his mom, a classical dancer. Wow. Even his great-grandfather was a big-time film director back in the 1930s. Seriously. Talk about a family legacy in film. Okay, with a background like that, it's almost like music was meant to be, you know? Right. But even coming from a film family, you still got to make your own name. Which brings us to... Oh, here we go. 2012, Why This Cool of Very Diet. That song was everywhere. Everywhere. It was huge. Over 450 million views just on YouTube. Insane. And it wasn't just catchy. That song changed how Indian music could go global, you know, through the internet. Like, before that, those numbers were unheard of. It's crazy how a song with, like, kind of silly lyrics could blow up like that. Did it affect his career beyond just, like, the viral fame? Totally. That song launched him at, what, 22 years old? Yeah, he was young. But it's his work after Kolaveri Die that made him a serious composer. He goes on to do some of the biggest Tamil films. Oh, like what? Kathy with VJ. Okay. Peta with... Who else? No way with Regina Kemp again. You got it. So he's working with like biggest names in the biz. Did those people like change his style at all? You can definitely hear it in his music. One thing about Anna Root, he blends genres like crazy. Yeah. Traditional Indian music, electronic, hip hop. It's like he makes this like sonic tapestry of influences. I love that sonic tapestry. Yeah. Because it's not just like throwing genres together randomly. It's got to all fit. Yeah. Know, be uniquely him. Exactly. And he knows just the right artist to bring in. Like in Ether Nishal, he got rappers Yo-Yo Honey Singh and Hip Hop Tamisha. Oh, cool. Created this like fresh, energetic sound. People loved it. That's awesome. Yeah. Speaking of collabs, his remix of Cold Water with Diplo, mm. massive. Proves how global his music got. For sure. And with that global recognition comes the awards. Ani has got a bunch, Filmfare Awards, so Sima Awards, like the South Indian Film Fairs, right, right. Edison Awards, VJ Awards. Dude's cleaned up. Wow, impressive. Yeah. So he's killing it as a composer. Yeah. But what about singing? His wiki mentions awards for that too. Oh, yeah. In Indian cinema, playback singers do the vocals for actors on screen. <laughs> so Anirudh not only makes the music, a lot of times he's the voice you hear. Oh, wow. Shows off even more of his talent. Yeah. Right? So he's writing these killer tracks but he's often the voice too. Man, that's talent. Are there any like standout vocal performances uh -huh. where you really hear him shine? Oh, for sure. A few come to mind. Actually, you mentioned liking Selfie Pula from KP. Yeah, I love that song. Have you heard the Telugu version, Paka Local? It was in Serena Do? No, I haven't actually. Is it like a straight up translation or? Not even close. Ayurud often tweaks his music for different regions, languages, you know. So interesting. Like with this one, they got a different singer, changed the music a bit, but it's still got that selfie pool energy, you know. That's cool. So he gets how to make it work for a different audience. Exactly. We've talked a lot about like the big names he's worked with. But are there any collabs that really stand out? Like, they really affected his music. One that pops up is his work with this director, Siva Kirtikan. Okay. They did a bunch of films together. Ramo, The Lycoran, Doctor, Dawn. Each soundtrack, it's totally Anirudh, but it also just fits that movie perfectly. It makes you wonder, like, what is it about that partnership that clicks? It's got to be that creative energy they have, that trust. From what I've read, they're super open in the studio, you know? pushing each other which leads to some really different film scores i like that so like give me an example when did they get really experimental really surprise people oh okay marana mass from peta okay now this wasn't your usual regini Kanth intro song starts off almost haunting traditional indian instruments then bam it explodes into this huge orchestral anthem unexpected but it works. I'm checking that out later. Marana Mass. <laughs> Gotta hear it. But, you know, he's huge in South India, but he hasn't done a ton in Bollywood. 
any reason why. Good question. Lots of people talk about this. There's no real answer, but it's probably a few things. First, he's crazy busy with South Indian projects, right? Right. Bollywood's a whole different world. Connections, different way of doing things. You really got to commit to break in there. Makes sense. It's not just talent. It's the whole scene. Right. Speaking of different scenes, his wiki says he signed with Sony Music back in 2016. Oh, yeah. For his own albums, concerts, right? The big move. Yeah. Man, he could do stuff outside of film, connect with fans directly. So what's his solo stuff like? Is it way different than the film soundtracks? It is, in a way. Yeah. Like, he's got more freedom, genre-wise, themes, working with whoever he wants. So he's got more freedom, genre-wise, themes, working with whoever he wants. What's that sound like? Give us an example, something our listeners can check out. Okay, one track, it's called Bawaja. Okay. Features these singers, Irene and Srinidhi Venkatesh. Total different vibe than his, like, high-energy film stuff. It's mm. soulful, melodic, shows you he can do it all, you know. Bawaja, got it. Yeah. Added to the playlist. It's cool hearing about all this. Yeah. From Kulaveri Dai way back when to these huge movies, now his own thing. He's done a lot in a pretty short time, right? It's amazing. And I think it shows how dedicated he is, how talented. And he's not afraid to change things up, you know, as an artist. Doesn't just stick with what works. He keeps experimenting. Love that. And it all comes back to, like, his family's in film, but he made his own way. So for our listener who's now, like, obsessed with any rude, where do they even start? Hmm. Good question. I'd say listen to his stuff in order. Start early, then the film scores, then the solo stuff. Okay, like a timeline. Yeah, and you'll hear how his sound changes, who he works with, the stories he tells through the music. It's worth it. Totally agree. Like we said at the beginning, there's way more to him than just that one song. Way more. Any Rude Ravichander. A true musical force. We're going to be hearing that name a lot, I bet. No doubt. And who knows what he does next? That's the exciting part. Right. Okay, one last thought for our listeners. Mm -hmm. As you're going through Andy Rue's music, ask yourself, what is it that grabs you? How does it make you feel? Does it make you want to go create something too? Until next time, keep listening and stay curious.